there's been a, always been some weird speculation that people were able to tune into Mother Gaia, that some people were able to tune into the forest and able to tune into information that comes from all the animals and nature around you. Like there was a show, Charles Corralt on the Road, I know we've talked about this before, but there was a guy who used to live in Alaska and he said that he was a, he was a prospector. He would live out there by himself for months at a time and after a while he could talk to the animals with his brain. What? Really? And then when he would come back into town, eventually it would go away. But he, had a, a, he said there wasn't words, but there was a way of communicating with animals that you would have. Because you, there was no TV, there was no radio, there was, you, you got tuned into different things. It sounds totally like horseshit, but... Dr. Doolittle. But if you talk to like the Indians in, uh, or the, uh, the natives in Peru, when they, um, they, they brew this ayahuasca stuff, this psychedelic beverage. Yeah, ro- um, Robin Quivers yeah. just went down and yeah. did it. Well, the thing about ayahuasca is they've been doing it for 10,000 years, way before written history. Mm-hmm. And then you ask them how they learned how to do this. I mean, the speculation is 10,000 years ago. The, the real evidence is probably only like a couple thousand. But when you, they ask these people how they figured out how to do this, they say that the forest told them that the plants told them how to do this, told them how to make this. There's a, over 100,000 different plants in the Amazon. They figured out how to take the leaves of one and the root and the vines of another and combine them because one of them contains the chemical DMT and the other one contains what's called an MAO inhibitor, something called harmine. Because you can't eat this psychedelic stuff. You can't eat DMT because it exists in so many different things that if you eat it, your, your body has the ability to break it down yeah. inside your stomach with monoamine oxidase. So this stuff called harmine, this other plant that produces this natural MAO inhibitor, they have to mix this stuff in and they have to boil it and they have to break it down over hours and hours. How the fuck did these, these people living on dirt floors and huts with no books, how the fuck did they ever figure out how to take these plants and put them together? Well, they say that the forest told them how to do it. It sounds ridiculous. Or there's a thousand just, dead people yeah, around. Yeah, a thousand. Like, nope, <laughs> not that one. Yeah, exactly. Don't put those two together. And then, and you guys are... see Frank? He's fucked, bro. Yeah, the real question is, <laughs> when did this information about the forest telling them to do this happen? Did it happen after they took the ayahuasca? Because right. that would make a lot of sense. And why do they just stop with ayahuasca? Why wouldn't they just keep, yeah. like, give us more, yeah. give us other good shit, you, you know? know? Dude, you don't need anything else once you do the ayahuasca. <laughs> you really don't. You know, really? Robin Quivers is, is talked about it, and, you know, I'll I've talked about it, it, you know, I, and I've I've toned tuned Stando, <coughs> tuned uh, Stanhope into it. And uh-huh. There's a bunch of people that I know that have had DMT in their life, and once you've done it, everything else seems completely silly. Everything, the the economy seems silly, your life seems silly, driving and traffic seems silly, whoa, the media seems silly. Everything seems silly and juvenile and temporary. How long? What, what is you? I mean, it's not like a thing where you can go. Out. You you need like a week. Well, you right? need some time to. Digest it. You you don't need you, it's not, you don't need time to do the drug. If you smoke DMT, it only takes about 15 minutes. If you take ayahuasca, the mm-hmm. orally active version, it's a less less potent version of the experience, but it's over a few hours yeah. as opposed to over 15 minutes. So, but what it is is the most trippy experience, the most bizarre outside of this world, the most separate experience you could ever possibly have. And once you've had that. You know, and you start talking about why why doesn't he do other things? Why doesn't he figure out, you know, how to make a a fucking jet car? You know, why don't the plants teach teach him how to do that? Yeah. You you just want to go back to that world. Those fucking people that live in the Amazon, man, they like doing it all the time. They just do it. They just, they just, they just tune in to the spirit world and tra- astral travel and fucking illuminant snakes that fly through the air. Does it make pot different? Like, can you go back? Like, you be like, ah, I wish. Or is it something like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, what do you is mean? it. Does it make like the experience of, of smoking pot like any different now at I all? I think that. I think or that. Or less, less important or less fun? Or well, less... I think that you, you. First of all, one time I had a flashback after I took it from smoking pot. I've never been able to do it again. Really? Like one time I did DMT, and then uh, a week later. I was smoking weed and I had a flashback, a real flashback where I got to the door. There's a door, to like when you when you have the DMT experience, it's a very fucked up experience. And for those of you that are anti-drug and for those of you that are listening to this that are like, you know, what kind of fucking loser is talking about doing drugs and what the fuck is this stupid shit and this kid's listening? I think human beings owe an obligation to tell the truth about their experiences. 
and there there is something to this that's very life changing. It changed me for sure. It still is changing me. It's uh, my my DMT experiences for sure have made me a better person, a nicer person, more sensitive, more more aware of the universe. I'm not I'm not, I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I'm under a lot of pressure. Sometimes I snap at people. I try to keep it all together as much as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. But for sure, I'm absolutely different at my core because of having the DMT experience. All drugs aren't good for you, but some drugs are. You know, and they're not too good for everybody. You, you, we should have fucking shamans. We should have places where you could go, where you, you could go to some professional place where this guy is sanctioned by the community. Now, this is the guy that knows how to do mushrooms. And you go to this guy's house, and he's got brilliant mushrooms, and they're all perfect, and he grows them himself. So there's nothing sketchy. And how many mushroom trips have you been on? A thousand. Okay. All right. A you thousand. Can Shit. Yeah, you know yeah. what you're doing. How many grams are we going to do today? Well, this is what we're going to do. You're going to be in this room, silent darkness. You're going to do five grams. I'm going to be outside the door. I'm going to be totally sober. I have a phone. I have a car. Uh, I can take you to the hospital if you need to. But the, side, the, the freak out's really only in your mind, and you're going to be fine physically. Just don't worry about it. I've been there a thousand times. Nobody dies from this shit. And then you could go and do it instead of being over your friend's house and you fucking escape into the woods, and then you get too fucked up in the yeah. woods. You don't know how to get back See, to your house. That sounds so much better, the second one, instead of having some <laughs> creepy dude sitting outside of a bedroom door with a phone well, ready the to call the police on you. But it's funny, though. But I... <laughs>